All right, so we're in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in the city of Orlando. Uh, we're here for a safety inspection, so different than usual. So we got this customer that called us last couple of days, and he wanted to see if we had time to do a safety inspection. So, all right, well, I know it's a 2016, the unit's a 2016, so Laurel and I will go to the safety purpose of this unit. So we're going to go to electrical, whatever the basic. I'm going on the roof just to check if ACs are staying there. So a couple of little details to make sure that it's a safe unit. I'm not going to look at sealant and places, which I already did since I'm here. It's like, oh. people, if we have to do it, you want a life safety, we'll do it. Please don't do this. This is a loss of time. You need a full-blown inspection. I mean, even if you're comfortable and you think you know it all and you've figured it out, you might have some big surprises like we had yesterday, actually. The unit was full of water, but it was, hey, I'm living in there the day after you're gone, which now she probably moved in the motel. So that's my point. You might be feeling safe of what you said and what you saw and how comfortable you are with this, which is fine. So that's why I said, okay, well, if that's what you want, we'll do a safety. And I will try. I promise I will try. And it's not going to happen. There's stuff that I will see that I can't unsee. But that's not what you asked me to check for. So it's going to be kind of interesting to bottle in and keep it in. So there goes the safety inspection. So now I'm going to go in with Laurel, and she's going to tell us what she's going to check in there. <laughs> Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you'll be notified when our next video comes out. First thing on this safety inspection today that we noticed is the fire extinguisher. So right here at the beginning, at the entrance, they have the BC. Guys, you need the ABC, which they do have right here in the garage. So you'll see. Now, even though it looks like it's the same, you can tell it's not, and it'll say A, B, and C. You definitely want that, and we wanna make sure that it is charged. And this is just B, C. The other things that I'm gonna to check today on the inside, I'm gonna go through the smoke detectors, the LP. We're also gonna do um, a LP test on the stove and the oven, and Pierre's gonna do a hot skin test also on the outside. I'm gonna go through all of the electrical outlets, making sure they're working and making sure the GFCI is working as well. So today it's just the safety. Also, part of the safety are your emergency exits. How many of you actually open up those exits? And if you have kids, do you have a plan? Have you showed them how to use it, how to get out and where you're gonna meet? Because things happen, so you wanna be prepared. So stick around, we're gonna give you that update. So guys, along the lines of the safety, I am going to link above our safety video. You've got to watch this. This is incredibly important. It's crucial. In the comments below, we want to know when was the last time you checked the date of your smoke detector and you actually heard that thing scream at you. You need to make sure they're working. So what did you find up there? What well, happened to you? The smoke today? detector did not work ends up being that there was no battery in it. It probably works, but gosh, these guys are camping in this on a regular basis. They have children and probably one night it was screaming and they thought, I got to take the battery out and may have forgotten to put the battery I'm sure a lot back of people in. recognize themselves. You know that battery, that nine volt that everybody knows that, that when it changed the time you change a battery, that was three got years ago that. that you didn't do that. And that battery that you threw in the drawer to make your wife believe that, yeah, yeah, I changed it. Just throw it in the garbage can, put one up there. We don't want to have, we like to hear about you, but not from the news. Definitely not from the news. So, I was just saying to Lowell, she says, do, do not drink this as we're, as we're uh, filming this. It's pacifier. Th that's how she calls it. This is my pacifier. You'll see me, if you see me somewhere, I normally have a cup of coffee. Always. That's my, so that hype stress, this brings me down. This for people who are not familiar, I think you gotta go to Indiana and Michigan to see those. So for people who knows this. Great coffee, they big, didn't even pay us to, buy. they did not pay us yeah, to say that. Yeah, believe me, they did not. <laughs> that must have cost seven bucks. But going back to the safety, as I said earlier, and I'm just gonna test people here. 
Um, I want you to tell me in the comment below, are we filming this right after the inspection? Or are we dressed differently? I don't know, I'm just checking on people who follow us. <laughs> so, like I said earlier, I'm pretty adamant about this. I, I'll do it because people want to, and that's exactly what happened to me today, or yesterday. It all depends, you figure it out. Um, what I see... You can't that, unsee. That I cannot unsee. So it's like, okay, you want me to go there, you want me to check, but you're trying to be cheap enough to say, well, just test this, but you hope. You know, like when you go to the doctor and you say, uh, well, I got this problem. Oh, okay, they get you in. But then you say, well, I also have this problem. Don't do that to us. This is, you're hurting my feelings because now you're making me look, and I always over look at more stuff than I should anyway. But the first thing I do when I come in is, I'm already watching some region that I know, and I'm thinking, oh, geez, there we go. And I'm not here to check this. And it's, it's hard to partially do an inspection. Yeah. It's really hard to unsee things that is not included in that certain particular inspection. And, A premier inspection includes everything, including your life safety, but every detail. I don't. We don't even call it premier. That was the school term that if you call. Uh, it's just our RV inspection. From the NRVIA, they're always going to say essential, premier. We don't do that. For us, it's a full-blown inspection. We don't even do essential. Essential is for us to be cheap for you. Well, if I'm cheap, that means you don't want me to deliver. You just want me to find things that... Actually, you want to hear... You want me to tell you what you want to hear in order to purchase it because, well, I just want to make sure that it's okay, but I want it. Essential is That's a basic problem. overview. And so it is essential. It's like might as well just do safety. At that point, don't even do essential. People are going to be pissed at me, inspectors, but I don't care. At that point, just do a safety. Just go with, okay, is it safe? Good. I know everything. I'm a plumber, I'm an electrician, I'm a contractor. So, okay, go at it. If you know everything, just go around it. Then ask us to go do an inspection and we'll try to double just to find the stuff that you forgot to look at, just for shits and giggle, giggles and shits, whatever. Um, so that's going around there, testing all the system. It's all fine and dandy, but the first thing we saw, and, and, and she, Lowell, stated it, that little kitchen extinguisher. I mean, I even talked that to the customer who sent us there and says, listen, yes. if that's a rule and regulation and it's okay by the, the NTSB or whoever, uh, do yourself a favor. Do a real extinguisher there, uh, especially the kitchen. If something blows, you're in for rides. That little thingy might be good for the, the stove, the cooktop. It's good to keep directly under your kitchen sink, but the one at the entrance, you need to have the ABC. That's good but by that, your bed. So if yeah, ever something happens something at night, small. you just walk and you, you spray yourself out to find another place to get out. I mean, we got a good friend. Izzy's the same way he brought that up before. See, when you're in the forest, a lot of people see it differently. They're with firemen. They, Izzy, how many... Uh, Extinguisher, do you have in, in Nelly again? That's what I'm saying. You, you got... Too much is never Things enough. happen. Everybody always says it happens to somebody else. No, it can happen to you too. You don't want it to be, but you want to be prepared for that situation. So, to summarize what I found, test was good, propane was good, electrical, I had a generator, and by the way, that was another thing. We had a conversation with the, with the seller and the, the potential buyer is... I cannot do a test out of a generator. Yes, it makes the engine works the power, but I cannot do a hot skin test, meaning if there's a ground to your, to your camper, if there's a wire that's grounded to, to the electric system, we got to be hooked up to ground shore power to show that it, there is a contact that the power goes from your camper back to the ground. Then we can have a reading. If you put it on a generator, it's insulated. Isolated? or insulated. See, either word, you figure it out, write it down below which word I should use. Am I insulated from the ground or am I isolated from the ground? I like to keep warm at night, so that was a joke. Don't go by that. So, um, it's a French joke. And typically he never laughs anyway when it's a French joke. So I just have to have some ground power. So in this unit, we kind of have a, it was kind of special because we only had a an outlet, a 110 outlet from a 50 amp to a 15 amp, ouch. So I'm gonna tell you what happened. 
and Jeremy, hope you watched that, that video, but um, the lack of voltage coming in, which Lowell tested the voltage as we won shore power, so that little electric cord that's 150 feet to get to the camper on the street side, we lose a lot of amperage and a lot of voltage. So she tested, what, 106, 108 in voltage. And it would screech at me. Yeah, yeah. it would scream as a ground fault, which there wasn't enough power. So when we tried the AC, well, the AC was talking to us like it's not supposed to. So that's where it's hard. How do you want me to go, do a good test if we don't have enough power? So that's as much for the buyer to be smart enough to say, um, I really want to test this. So that's why for me, those are half-ass inspection. So there's my point. Yeah, I know some people don't want to spend more than five, six hundred bucks and just, you know, let's just do a safety. You know, I just want to know because I know about everything. Good. I mean, might as well find one of your friends and say, let's try to figure this out instead of spending five hundred bucks. That's how I feel. I'm, I will preach for full-blown inspection all the time. We just have a couple of friends who just barely called us before we started filming this and they're looking to buy a used unit from the family member and what, what did Marvin say? He, he said that he needs, he needs to know that it is going to be safe. Even though it's family, yeah. he still wants to know that this is going to be a safe unit for, for them. They've been displaced with uh, Hurricane Ian, and they need a place to live. But they also know that they need a safe place to live. Because they know us, they kind of, that's why they connected, and they want to know, says, okay, am I buying a money pit? Or So he asked us, hey, you know, can we do this? Yeah, sure. I mean, your family especially family, it's even harder because if something happens, you're not going to tell them that you're pissed after the fact. They might not even know that they had a camper for the last five years that they used twice because some people just park it in the backyard and they never look at it. Well, we had that a couple of days ago, that 2018. Roof is done, uh, done as there's no more roof. You've got to redo the whole roof. The it's, plier, it's the is gone. Yeah. Soft like Play-Doh. The, the slide-out was and the roof was, so... It's, do yourself a favor. I hope you learned something out of this. And if I insulted a couple of people by saying, do not do this and do this instead, hey, it's your money. You do whatever you want. We'll do whatever you want. We'll travel to China if you pay us to go. It's fine. But as, as some friends of ours told us, I'd rather be honest. Uh, it's like, uh, how, how do you honest say Honest is the best policy. It's, it's simple. People will get to not like you because you're honest either the seller or the buyer. Uh, sometimes we piss off the buyer because he was trying to convince his wife to buy this, which is a piece of junk, but he's still going to buy it because he wants it. He thinks it's good. And then we piss off the seller because either they knew there was a problem or they're kind of pissed because now you found a problem. We had that not too long ago. So people, do yourself a favor. Please understand that this is exactly like our motto. It has nothing to do with the destination. It's all about the journey.